9.6 Solving Right Triangles Inverse Trigonometry What is the inverse of addition? Subtraction What is the inverse of division? Multiplication What is the inverse of squaring? X squared Square root What is the inverse of sine? The inverse of sine is called the inverse sine. It's the opposite of sine. When you know the lengths of the sides of a right triangle, all three sides, how can you find the measures of the two acute angles besides the right angle? You use inverse trigonometry. Regular trigonometry that we've been using thus far um, results in knowing side lengths, and inverse trigonometry is going to re result in knowing angles. So this is helpful if you would like to know an angle of a right triangle. Inverse trigonometry, it's used to find a missing angle of a right triangle. Angle, that's the key here. So this is how you write it, the inverse sine. So remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the way you would write it is that you have the sine, and then you do a little negative one up to, at the top. The negative one has nothing to do with the math. You don't type that into the calculator. It is not an exponent, nothing like that. It's just to um, denote that you're the, doing the opposite of a sine. You're doing an inverse sine. Then instead of inside of your parentheses, instead of an angle or a theta going inside of there, your side lengths go inside of there. So your opposite divided by your hypotenuse goes inside of your inverse sign. And then that spits out a theta or an angle. So if you do the inverse sign of an opposite over hypotenuse, it will spit out an angle measure. You read this, like um, if it was the tangent, we're going to write that one in a minute, but you read it as the inverse tangent of x. So you would say the inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse equals an angle. So the inverse cosine, the cosine inverse is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that spits out an angle. And the inverse tangent is opposite over adjacent equals an angle. So each of these inverse operations spit out angle measures. So again, looking at regular trigonometry, this is the forward direction, the sine of some angle measure, we used to write it like this, the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is a, which are side lengths. So angle in, side length out, angle in, side length out. But this is what we're learning today, which is inverse sine. You switch the inputs and the outputs. Side length in, angle out. Side length in, angle out. So first thing we're going to do is use a calculator to approximate the measures of A, B, and C to the nearest tenth of degree. Now, everybody's calculator is a little bit different, but most of the time on the calculator, the inverse buttons are right next to the basic um, trigonometry buttons. Uh, sometimes on calculators, you have to hit the second button. Like on a TI-83, you have to hit second and then tangent in order to get the inverse operation. So what's happening is that we're taking the inverse of both sides. Because think about if you had um, addition on both sides, you would do subtraction on both sides in order to undo that. So if we want to get at this angle A, if I want to know what the measure of angle A is, I need to inverse this tangent on both sides. So I would do the tangent inverse on this side, and I would do the tangent inverse, you know, on this side. <laughs> um, so then the tangents cancel on the left, and all you're left with is just your A is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.75. And this is what you type into your calculator. So you would 
Um, on a phone calculator, you would need to type the point zero seven five first and then the inverse tangent button. Always go in reverse on a phone. But if you're using a regular calculator, you just need to grab your inverse tangent and then a point zero seven five. It says round to the nearest tenth of a degree, so one decimal place. So that's three thirty six point eight six. But if we round it correctly, angle A will be 36.9 degrees. We're spitting out degree measures now. Try the second two on your own. So now your degree measures should be somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees uh, because we know we're, we're going to be using this inside of right triangles. If your degree measure it looks negative or if, if you got something that is greater than 90, you've done something wrong. You need to be somewhere in between there, somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. Um, so we've got 36, 60, and 81. Okay, so the rest of this chapter um, is going to be asking us to do what's called solving a, right tri solving a right triangle. To solve a right triangle means to find all the unknown sides, so all the sides, so three sides, and all the angle measures, which is going to be three angle measures. The good news is that we already know one of the angle measures, so technically you're really only going to be finding two angle measures because we already know one of them is 90 degrees. You can solve a right triangle. Remember, this only works for right triangles when you know either of the following. So you can solve a right triangle if you know two side lengths. That's enough information. Or if you know one side length, one side and one angle, one acute angle besides the 90 degree angle. So now we're going to try this on. We're going to solve some triangles. Example number two, solve the right triangle, round decimal answers to the nearest tenth. So let's take an inventory of what we have and what we want. So I know two side lengths and I know it's a right triangle. I'm missing angle B, angle A, and side C. So I'm just gonna make a little, a little list here. So I wanna know side length C is gonna be some length. I wanna know angle B is some angle measure. And then angle A is some angle measure. So I know both of these are going to be degree measures, just kind of taking an inventory. So this is going to be a length, and these two are going to be angle measures. That's what we need to find in, or in this problem. So the first one that we should go for is side length C. The reason that we should go for side length C is because we know two of the side lengths, and all we're missing is a third, which means we can use Pythagorean theorem. So uh, using Pythagorean theorem, we can say 3 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared, where C is the hypotenuse. 9 plus 4 equals C squared. 13 equals C squared. And opposite of a square is a square root. So C equals the square root of 13. And it did say to round our answers to the nearest tenth. And the square root of 13 rounded to the nearest tenth is 3.6. So side length C, I'll use a different color just to highlight it, is 3.6. So this length here is 3.6. So now we know all three side lengths, and now we want to go for angle measures. Now that's our brand new tool that we just learned. It's called inverse trigonometry. So you get to choose which angle measure you'd like to go for first. It doesn't matter if you choose B or A. Let's go ahead and go for B first. If we choose angle B, I can go ahead and put a theta there if I want to, to denote that that's the angle measure that we are referencing. 
So if that is angle theta, this C length is a hypotenuse. From theta, two is opposite, it's opposite of theta, and three is adjacent. So now when we set up our inverse trigonometry, we gotta go from B and use the side lengths that they provided us an O and an A. So I'll just write the Sokotoa down. So O and A is gonna be our tangent. So I'm gonna set up an inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent, two over three equals an angle measure. So then we type that into our calculator, the inverse tangent of two over three is gonna be 33.69, but rounded to the correct decimal place, 33.7 degrees. Now, which angle measure was that again? That was angle B. Angle B is gonna be 33.7 degrees. 33.7 degrees. Now the last angle measure is pretty easy to find this angle measure A because we already have two angle measures. So using triangle sum theorem or that all triangles sum to 180 degrees, we can say 90 plus 33.7 is 123.7 minus 180. So 180 minus 123.7 leaves us with an angle measure of 56 Point three degrees for angle A. So then 56.3, and this angle measure here is 56.3 degrees. That's solving a right triangle when we know two of the side lengths. Now we're going to try example B. Let's take inventory of what we have and what we want. I know one length, it's a hypotenuse, and I know one acute angle to be 25, and I know it's a right triangle, and this time we're looking for two other side lengths. Previously on the last problem, we knew two of the side lengths, and we were trying to find a third one. So we got to go about this a different way, but uh, first let's take inventory of what we want. So we want side length G, some side length, side length H, and then we need to know the measure of angle G. And that's gonna be an angle measure. So two sides and an angle. We need to know this angle G. So the first one that has, I think is the easiest one is triangle sum theorem, 25 and 90 and some missing angle make 180 degrees. So 25 plus 90 is gonna be 115. 180 minus 115 is 65. So that means that the measure of angle G is 65 degrees. That was using triangle sum theorem that all triangles, all three angles add to 180 degrees. Now we'd like to go for side length G and side length H. So I'm going to label my side lengths, hypotenuse, and then let's use the 25 as our theta. So from 25, I can say that that side length is opposite and G is adjacent. You could have used the 65 if you wanted to. You'll get the same answer if you label it correctly, but um, you can decide. So now which of our tools, not inverse, gets us angle measures, but regular trigonometry gets us side lengths. So Sokotoa. Let's go for H first, just because it's on my right. I guess we could have gone for G. I wrote it on the top. Either way, um, we know 13. We know an H. So I know I'm not going to be using a tangent in this case because I know the hypotenuse. So it's either going to be a sine or a cosine. So it's going to be, um, let's do, I said uh, let's go for H first. So if we go for H, it's an O and an H. An O and an H, which is going to be a sine. So the sine of the theta that I chose, 25, equals h over 13. Remember, we do angles in and side lengths out for these ones. So times 13 on both sides. So then h equals 13 times the sine of 25. 
And when we type that into our calculator, we see that that's um, 5.49. And if we round it to one decimal place, that's going to be 5.5. So H is going to be 5.5. So the side length H is 5.5. We're going to use the same technique to go for G. We're using regular trigonometry, but this time it's an A and an H. So that's going to be a cosine. So the cosine of 25 equals G over 13 times 13 on both sides. So G equals 13 times the cosine of 25. So G is approximately 11.78, blah, blah, blah. And rounded correctly, G is 11.8. So now let's summarize our tools. These are all the tools in the right triangle toolbox now. So Pythagorean theorem, let's think about when we use it what we want and what, what we know and, you know, what does it provide, that kind of thing. So Pythagorean theorem, what do we need to know? We know two sides. What do we want from Pythagorean theorem? A third side. How about trigonometry? Trigonometry, you need to know one side and one angle and we want another side. So we have a side and an angle and we want another side for regular trigonometry. Now we have inverse trigonometry that we, that we added today. What do you need to know? For tr uh, inverse trigonometry, you need to know at least two sides, which is the same as Pythagorean theorem. But what do we want? out of inverse trigonometry. We don't want the third side, we want an angle measure. So the, the input is the same between Pythagorean theorem and inverse trig, but your desired outcome is different. And then this is the one that is kind of the out, odd man out, the similar right triangles. What do you know? You know the altitude and what do you want? You want sides. So note that inverse trigonometry is the only one that deals with angles. That's the only tool in the toolbox that will spit out angles. None of the other tools in the toolbox will give you angle measures. Only si the other tools will only give you side measures, side lengths. Inverse trigonometry is the only tool that will allow you to find angle measures of right triangles. Thank you.